Yeah, so give me a quick show of hands. Wake up. Hello. Uh, if you think you may make a map to support a crisis or a disaster, put a hand in the air. If you might have to use one to run away from one, put a hand in the air. The rest of you, you're going to die because you need a map. All right, let me tell you now. Now, um, my history, I started as a firefighter March 20th, 1986. That was my first career. Um, I've since gotten fat and lazy. They call me the chief. I stand in the front yard with the radio now. I started in geospatial technologies in 91 and have messed around with it. And I got a wake up call with this little rainstorm that came through Mississippi. It was called Hurricane Katrina. And those two dynamic worlds of mine came colliding together. Because in the emergency response world, by way of example, in 1904, the city of Baltimore burned to the ground. Smooth as fine little ashes. And the reason why I burned to the ground was not for a lack of resources, because when the fire got going, it got ripping. They called for help from neighboring jurisdictions. They had volunteer firefighters coming from as far away as Trenton, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. And all those firemen, the horses, and the carriages, and the steam wagons, and they showed up, and they went to hook the Baltimore's fire hydrants and went, uh-oh, they have a different hose thread. So they became bystanders. Now, <clears throat> I joke that fire service here in the United States is 331 years of experience uninterrupted by progress. However, we have learned from that little Baltimore example that emergency services have to be standards-based organizations. We have to provide a certain standard of care. If you'd like the medic to show up to your house to take care of you when you have a heart attack and all he knows is, well, how do I put the Band-Aid on a heart attack? That's not going to work. It has to have interoperability, interchangeability. My radio system has to talk to the neighboring jurisdiction's radio system. If it doesn't, we've got a problem. We have to have organizational consistency. Things like that are critical. Scalability, common operations. In the GIS world, we have it too. But do you know about it? Can you point to those standards for colors, symbols, scale, coordinate systems, projections, page size? There are standards, just like an emergency response, that should be applied to what we do. Otherwise, you end up with my map of Australia there. <clears throat> it's just whatever rock you find, and hey, look, that looks like Australia, right? We like to be creative as geospatial professionals, but that's not always the best idea. There are standards bodies out there. In fact, soon after Roger Tomlinson came up with GIS, my friend Carl Reed, he told him how to make it standard. Right? We have the Federal Geographic Data Committee, FGDC.gov. How many of y'all have heard about the U.S. National Grid? Catastral Data Standard. The Address Data Content Standard. How many of you have interacted or read Open Geospatial Consortium Standards? I know this stuff is like watching paint dry. Standards are not exciting things, but they're important to what we need to do. We have ANSI and ISO paper sizes. You get asked to make a map of your community, you say, what? What size page am I going to put it on, not what scale am I going to print it on? We have standards within government. Some really great examples. We have this 40-year-old map series called the Topographic Map, put out by the USGS. As a firefighter, I love that map. GIS professionals hate it. They say, well, that's too darn old. It's 40 years old. You know what? When a, a, an Alzheimer's patient goes missing, they're not going to go up slope more than one degree. They're going to stay near a paved surface. They're going to follow a track going home. Where do I get slope from? My topo map. Does a fire burn uphill? Yep. That's valuable information. Now, those standards organizations get the message across, but this slide, and I apologize for the coloration, it kind of screws it up even more than, than, than the message I'm getting across. 10% of the people I wanted to see this presentation didn't get to see it as intended. You know why? If you caught it, my slides are red and green. What percentage of the population is colorblind? The importance of standards and being aware of them are important. When you start applying it to emergency response, you have to ask yourself the question, are you willing to bet your life on your map? Are you applying the right standard that's going to show the right symbol for the right facility in the right place? Because when you make maps in support of a time of crisis or disaster, it is not about you. Is it about the people that are running away from this or trying to respond and help folks who are dealing with a scenario like that? That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you for your time.